dear friend welcome to the lecture series in microprocessors and microcontrollers in today's video lecture we are going to learn about the architecture of 8086 microprocessor here is the architecture of the 8086 microprocessor the architecture is divided into two units in order to support the pipelining process and the two units that are present in architecture of 8086 microprocessor are BIU bus interface unit and another unit is EU stands for execution unit as the name says here for BIU it is used to interface the microprocessor to the external world and execution unit is comprising the operations that are to be carried out which are specified in the instructions and the various registers that are supporting those execution of the instructions and we are going to see what are the various functional blocks that are present in biu and that are present in eu and what are the functions of each and every block which are present in those two units coming to the first block that is biu stands for bus interface unit it provides the interface of 8086 to other devices or to the external world it generates the 20 bit physical address for memory access it fetches instructions from memory transfers data to and from the memory and io and it supports pipelining using the 6 byte instruction tree so these are the various actions that can be done by the biu unit and we have some functional blocks or components in biu they are segment registers instruction pointer address generation unit and instruction queue let us talk about the individual functional blocks in the biu unit the first one is segment registers so we have four segments they stands for core segment data segment stack segment and extra segment respectively these register uh, these registers are all uh, 16 bit wide and they deal with selecting the blocks and they are the segments of the main memory a segment register points at the beginning of a segment in memory the core segment register points at the segment containing the currently executing machine instruction the core segment register holds the base address for the core segment the data segment register ds generally points at global variables for the program the ds register holds the base address for the data segment the extra segment register es is exactly that an extra segment register the 8086 programs often use the segment register to gain access to segments when it is difficult or impossible to modify the other segment registers the ss register points at the segment containing the 8086 stack the stack is where the 8086 stores important machine state information subroutine return addresses procedure parameters and local variables ss register holds the base address for the stack segment coming to instruction pointer register here it is a 16 bit register it holds offset of the next instruction in the core segment address of the next instruction is calculated as core segment into 10h plus instruction pointer that is holding the offset address ip is incremented after every instruction byte is fetched ip gets a new value whenever a branch occurs coming to 20 bit physical address generation unit the biu has a physical address generation unit it generates the 20 bit physical address using segment and offset addresses using the below formula and the physical address in short pa equals to the base address or segment address into 10 this 10 is taken in hexadecimal plus offset address now in order to calculate the physical address let us take one example and this is the block diagram that is associated with the physical address calculation so here we have the base address then it is multiplied with 10 in hexadecimal then we will be having the offset address now the base address which is multiplied with 10h is added with the offset address so that we can get the physical address this is one way 
and also we can calculate this one in binary so both the things we are going to see in this particular example so first one we are going to see uh, this method where the base address is multiplied with the hexadecimal 10 so let consider the uh, segment address or base address as 1000h and the offset address as 0100h now the physical address will be calculated as base address into 10h plus offset address now the base address is given as 1000 into then 10 that um, all all the addresses are taken in hexadecimal so 1000h into 10h plus 0100h so when we calculate this we get physical address as 10100h the same thing can also be done by using the binary so in binary what we are going to do is we will take the uh, segment address then we shift four bits left side and then we add the offset address to the shifted version of the segment address so we have the segment address as 1000h so we have written them uh, uh, in the binary and each digit is represented with uh, four bits now we have shifted uh, these uh, bits four uh, four times left so that we will be getting 001 0000 0000 and at the end we will be just added four zeros now we have taken the offset address of 0100 so that was represented in terms of uh, binary numbers now we just added these then we get the physical address as 0001 0000 0000000000 so when we look at individual combinations it represents 1 0 1 0 0 so this is all about again 1 0 1 0 0 h which is a physical address if you uh, see this particular result there are 20 bits that are present so the physical address will be always having the 20 bits now coming to the another block it is an instruction queue whose size is 6 byte so as we know it is a 6 byte first in first out ram used to implement the pipelining process Fetching the next instruction while executing the current instruction is called pipelining. The BAU fetches the next six instruction bytes from the code segment and stores it into the queue. The execution unit removes instructions from the queue and executes them. The queue is refilled when at least two bytes are empty in the queue as 8086 has a 16-bit data bus. Pipelining increases the efficiency of the microprocessor. Pipelining fails when a branch occurs as the prefetched instructions are no longer useful. Hence, as soon as 8086 detects a branch operation, it clears or discards the entire queue. Now, the next six bytes from the new location are fixed and stored in the queue and pipelining continues. Coming to the other unit, execution unit. It fetches instructions from the queue in BIU, decodes and executes them. It performs arithmetic, logic, and internal data transfer operation. It sends request signals to the BIU to access the external module. And it operates with respect to T states, they are clock cycles. Coming to the various functional blocks or components in execution unit, that is EU. They are general purpose register, pointer and index register, arithmetic and logical unit, operand register, instruction register and instruction decoder unit, flag register. Coming to the general purpose registers, here we have four general purpose 16-bit registers named as AX, BX, CX, DX and these available uh, these registers are available to the programmer for storing the values during the programs now each of the individual 16 bit registers can be used as individual 8 bit registers such as in case of ax they can be individually used as 8 bit registers of ah and al coming to bx they can be used as 8 bit registers as bh and bl coming to cx they can be used as 8 bit ch and cl Coming to DH, they can be used as 8-bit uh, DH and DL registers. Beside their general purpose use, uh, these registers also have some specific functions. So here is the table indicating the 
a resistor as well as the special function. Ax can be uh, having the special function that it functions as an accumulator during the string operation. And Bx holds the memory address that is offset address in indirect addressing modes. Cx holds the count for instructions like loop, rotate, shift, and string operation. Dx is used with Ax to hold 32-bit values during multiplication and division. So in case of that 32-bit result, the lower 16 bits will be stored into Ax and the higher 16 bits will be stored into Dx. And it is used to hold the address of the IO port in indirect IO addressing mode. Coming to pointer and index register, we have stack pointer, which is of 16 bits length. It holds offset address at the top of the stack. Stack is a set of memory locations operating in last in first out manner. Stack is present in a memory in stack segment. The stack pointer is used with the stack segment register to calculate physical address for the stack segment. It is used during instructions like push, pop, call, return, etc. During push instruction, the stack pointer is decremented by 2 and during pop, it is incremented by 2. Coming to base pointer, which is of 16 bit length, the base pointer can hold offset address of any location in the stack segment. It is used to access random locations of the stack. Coming to source index, which is also 16 bit length, it is normally used to hold the offset address for data segment, but can also be used for other segments using the segment overriding. It holds offset address of source data in data segment during the string operation. Coming to destination uh, index, which is of 16 bit length, it is normally used to hold the offset address for extra segment, but can also be used for other segments using segment overriding. It holds offset address of destination in extra segment during string operations. Coming to other unit, ALU, which is of 16 bit length, and it stands for arithmetic and logic unit. It is 16 bit wide. It performs 8 and 16 bit arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, etc., and logic operations like AND or XOR operations, etc. Coming to operand register, it is a 16 bit register used by the control register to hold the operands temporarily, and it is not available to the programmer. Another uh, functional block is instruction register and instruction decoder unit. They present inside the control unit. The EU fetches an opcode from the queue into the instruction register. The instruction decoder decodes it and sends the information to the control circuit for execution. Coming to the flag register, it is a 16 bit register. It contains nine flags. These flags are of two types six, six status flags and three control flags. Status flags are affected by the ALU after every arithmetic or logical operation. They give the status of the current result. That's why they named as status flag. The control flags are used to control certain operations. They are changed by the programmer. So here is the structure of the flag register of HG write 6. So there are various flags that are available. It is of 16 bit length where the carry flag parity flag, auxiliary carry flag, zero flag, sign flag, and workflow flag are indicating the status of the result. So they will be called as status flag. And trap flag, interrupt flag, direction flag are changed by the programmer and used to control the certain operations. So they called as control flag. And there we can observe a letter X, uh, which indicates the reserved flags. Now coming to the uh, status flags here, let us talk about the carry flag. If any carry is generated, this carry flag will be one. If no carry is generated, the carry flag will be zero. Coming to parity flag, if the result is having even parity, then PF will be one. And if there is an odd uh, parity, that is odd number of ones in the result, then the PF will be set to zero. And coming to auxiliary carry flag, if any carry is generated from the lower nibble to upper nibble, then it is one. And if no such 
type of a nibble uh, there is no such type of carry generated from lower nibble to upper nibble then it will be equal to zero coming to zero flag if the result is zero then it is one if the result is non zero then it will be zero coming to uh, the sign flag if the msb of the result is one that is a negative result it will be one and if the msb of the result is zero that is positive then the sign flag will be zero coming to overflow flag so when the resistor is not enough to hold the data the resultant data then the overflow occurs and these kind of things will occur during the signed operation so if the result is not fit into the uh, result uh, not fit into the resistor then it will be one if it is not like that then it will be zero that indicates that no overflow is occurred coming to control flags so we have trap flag so here in order to uh, perform the single stepping it will be set to one if no single stepping is done then it will be set to zero coming to interrupt flag when if is set to one then interrupt will be enabled and when if is uh, reset to zero then interrupt will be disabled coming to direction flag when the direction flag is one then auto increment will be done that is the searching will be done from the lower address to the higher address when the direction flag is reset to zero then it is known as the auto decrement that is the searching will be done from the higher address to a uh, higher address to lower address hope you uh, like this video do like comment share and subscribe my channel for more technical content thanks for watching